I've long been fascinated with the concept of identity, long before I understood what that actually was. But I suppose it began when first asking myself the question, who am I? Of course, we are all identified by our names, but generally that tells us very little about ourselves, unless if our name happens to be something like Atticus Cedric Bertram Fotherington Thomas, in, in which case we're probably related to aristocracy, you know, somewhere down the line. But there exists within society at large a general obsession with categorising people according to one or several of a vast array of often competing identities. And these identities can range from matters of where one was born to one's physical characteristics or particular personal preferences. Some of our identities are consistent over our lives, but others change as we gain new skills and have different roles in life. Some aspects of our identities feel very central to, to who we are as a person, regardless of our circumstances, but then others might feel less important, dependent upon where we might be or who we're with. You might be a, a manager of some business or a, a personal assistant, and when you're at work, that identity is terribly important. But it's not important when you get home in the evening, where your identity as a mother or a father is far more important. Some identities are labels that others put on us, and while others see us as having that identity, maybe we don't. And then maybe we might choose to be identified in a way that makes no sense to those around us. It, it can be terribly confusing. But by and large, most means of identifying one another are really quite innocuous and inoffensive, though I'm sure some will always find some reason or another to take issue or poke fun. I might identify as being completely normal, but I suspect some might not be happy with that particular form of self-identification. Of course, I think that I am, but I'm also a, a British male between the ages of mm, 35 and 65 years old. I'm a, a tea drinker, and a marmite eater, along with other things, uh, uh, of, of, of course, uh, and I have blue eyes. But these are not the things that really matter, at least not unless I was wanting to join the all-male blue-eyed marmite-eating society of Great Britain, which I don't. And, and, and though there may be some who choose to identify themselves in ways that are simply not natural, I read recently of a woman who uh, identifies as a man who identifies as a dog. Yes, I did. Although there may be some who choose to identify themselves in ways that are not natural, we are what God has made us to be, and we do well to be content with that and to be thankful for that too. I suggested earlier that our identities might be used as a means of categorising people into different groups.
We certainly see this sort of thing at a, a national level when those who are identified by a particular nationality will wave the same flags and sing the same songs. They might even share the same exuberance when their national representative comes second in an international song competition. But then again, they may not. Well, as I speak, there are towns and villages throughout the length and breadth of this land which are being adorned with bunting and flags for the Platinum Jubilee celebrations next weekend. And what an incredible milestone that is. Now, I recognise that such things may not necessarily appeal to all those who identify as British. You know, they may not be everybody's cup of tea, so to speak. Uh, though they may, not, uh, they may not necessarily appeal to all who identify either as British or as being part of the Commonwealth. But for many, they are an essential part of who they are. For some, their national identity is of no particular importance, but for others it may mean everything, and even then it may mean all sorts of different things. I understand that. Well, in recent months we've seen something of an enthusiastic adoption of Ukrainian national identity by many who likely never even knew where the country was at the turn of the year. It's all rather remarkable, is it not? Identity is certainly not something to be dismissed out of hand. It's an essential part of understanding who we are. And our understanding of who we are will have a profound effect upon the way that we live our lives. It really is a matter of, uh, of great importance. Well, from the very beginning, God stamped his identity throughout the universe he created. He would later make known for our understanding that the, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The works of our creator reveal his glory wherever we look we see marks of his identity all over the place, as it were. But once the heavens and the earth were in place, God then created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So we are told in the opening chapter of the opening book of the Bible. In the image of God. Isn't that amazing? We're not to think of our physical anatomy, but of what makes us who we are as distinct from the rest of creation. Our true identities really have nothing to do with our physical composition, nothing to do with our appearance or physical attributes. Our true identities have to do with things that are far deeper than this. Somewhere stamped upon our souls are the words made in the image of God. It's why we're precious in the sight of God. It's why we can love God with our whole beings. It's why we are to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. The whole DNA of humanity, as it were, traces its way back to the very heart of God. You may recall that when Luke 
in his gospel records the genealogy of Jesus, he traces the ancestral line all the way back to Adam, whom he says was the son of God. Maybe the world doesn't know it, but that's where we've come from. That's whose we are. That's who we are. But soon humanity lost its true sense of identity. Soon after having been created in the image of God, the people thought they were something in and of themselves, and they tried to make a name for themselves, whereas in truth they were nothing. They were nobodies without God. Whatever identity they took upon themselves, it was a mistaken identity. So God had a plan. He took one man, Abraham. He took a man whom he blessed and whose name he made great. Of his descendants he made a great nation and he blessed them that they might be a blessing to the world. And he said to them, I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. Mm. But they too soon lost sight of who they were, and they saw themselves as being just like the other nations, only somehow more special or so they thought. They thought they were something of themselves, but they were nothing without their God. So through the prophet Hosea, God told them, you are now not my people, and I am not your God. And for centuries they drifted aimlessly without any real sense of belonging or identity. And they came to look forward to the day when once more God would restore what he had taken away just as the prophets had said that he would. And so, when the time came for all to be restored, God sent his Son into the world to bring light to a, a world of darkness. As John, the disciple of Jesus, wrote, He was in the world. And the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Isn't that amazing? Later, Paul, the great Christian scholar, would write, As indeed he says in Hosea, Those who were not my people, I will call my people. And her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And so it is in Christ that we have now been made children of the living God. In him we are now called sons and daughters of the living God. That is who we now 
Ah, oh, that is our new identity because of Jesus. And then Peter, in his first letter, will write, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Isn't this amazing? As the world stumbles about in darkness, struggling to make sense of it all, struggling to find some semblance of purpose and belonging and identity. As those in the world struggle to find their place in it, here we are in Christ with a real sense of purpose and belonging and a renewed identity as the children of the living God. Yes, that is who we now are. Forget all of our physical attributes, our national identities, our personal preferences. None of these things determines who we are. We are not truly identified by any of these transient characteristics as those are who are in this world. No, 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 no. We, we are identified by our standing in Christ as children of the living God. Isn't that amazing? I said something earlier about our understanding of who we are having a profound effect upon the way we live our lives. And so it should. Listen to John in his first letter, the beginning of chapter 3. See, he says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, he continues, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is, and every one who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Hmm. As children of God, we're to be like him. We're to be like our Father in heaven, with whom we identify in Christ. The world may not understand who we are, but it doesn't understand God. We're like foreigners in this world. We don't really belong here, as our citizenship is in heaven. That's who we are. That's our true identity in Christ. In, in a world in the midst of a crisis of identity, riddled with division and fragmented societies, so many not knowing who they really are, let us remember that we are not 
of this world and that we identify as the children of the living God by the grace of God in Jesus. May our Father in heaven truly bless us with a greater understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus. May he give us grace that we might live lives that are worthy of being children of the living God. May he bless us abundantly that we might truly be a blessing to those in the world around us. May he shine his light upon us that we might be as lights in this world bringing hope to those who walk in darkness. God bless us all and Thank you.